Hi everyone. So this is gonna be one of the most important videos of the complete Primavera P6 video series. So in this particular video, we'll be understanding how to track the progress of our project and how to update the status of the project versus how to see it with respect to our baseline. And uh, we'll be analyzing it thoroughly. So watch the video till the end. Okay, so see, first of all, in the last video, we have assigned the baseline uh, to our project. So if you go to project and if you go to assign baselines, then you can see that IT building construction is our project name and IT building construction B1 is our baseline number one. So the baseline has similar dates with as you can see on the screen. So this is our actual project. So baseline is also similar. So now what we will do, we will assume that baseline is similar to our project execution plan. And now we will be updating the status of the project. Like when did site clearance start, when it finished, when did excavation start, when it finished, whether it is started or not, whether it is finished or not. So we'll be updating it. So before that, if you want to see, if you want baseline to get reflected in your Gantt chart, then how you can do it. First of all, go to this chart view and right click, go to the bars and here you can see the option of primary baseline. So it will be displayed with some yellow color or something like that. If you click on OK, so see the bars will be something like that. OK, so if you click on OK. So after that, you can see these very small bars. If you can see below the red bars, these red activities are our main activities, critical ones. This green is also our main activity, but it is not critical. OK, but below these bars, you can see baseline right now. The baseline is just below our main bars. Why? Because I have already told you that for baseline, the dates I have kept just similar to our dates which are mentioned here. OK, so this is how you can activate your baseline. Now what needs to be done is you need to customize your activities window. You need to add few columns so that you can track your progress and update the status of the activities easily. You need to go to columns. You need to add some particular options like your actual start, your actual finish, then your baseline start and baseline finish. So maybe you can directly search from here. We'll write BL. So it will direct you to BL project actual or if you click on find next. So I think all the uh, headings with BL it is mentioning. So we want BL project start. So we will type BL project. So this is coming BL project finish and BL project start is here. Okay, so BL project finish and our BL project start. So let us move BL project start after activity name and BL project finish after BL project start. Okay, what next we need to find actual start and actual finish. And next, so this is our actual start and our actual finish. Okay, so we have moved it after BL start and finish. Next is you need to also add two columns of percentage complete. One is activity percentage complete and one is schedule percentage complete. So simply type percentage here and go to next. So activity percentage complete is already here. So we can move this activity percentage complete over here and then we need to find schedule percentage complete. So this is our schedule percentage complete. We can move it after actual percentage complete. So activity percentage complete will show that how much of the activity is actually completed and schedule percentage complete will show what is the planned percentage completion till this particular date. Okay, so that's all we can click on. Okay, and you see all the changes are applied. You can change the width of the columns. So that more data is visible on the screen right now actual start and actual finish is empty why because you have not updated then when the activity has actually started or finished and similarly activity percentage complete is also showing zero and schedule percentage complete is also showing zero it will update when you update the progress okay so you can see all these things you can also add the column of actual total cost here okay like budgeted total cost is already there. You can add 
actual total cost so you can move it in the end and click on ok so we are now ready to start with our progress updating ok so what you need to do is see First of all, everything will depend on the type of activity and type of duration. As you can see uh, in the general bar, most of the activities, I would say all the activities are task dependent and duration type is fixed duration and units. Okay. And percentage completion type is also physical. So I have already explained what the what is the meaning of percentage physical type. So percentage physical type means you will have to manually enter that how much of the work has got completed and how much of the work is remaining. Then how much time it will take. Like it, the percentage will not reflect the amount of days, number of days rather. Okay. And calendar is also fixed for all the activities. I have not changed the calendar for any of the activity as of now. Okay, so first of all, what we what we need to do is we need to decide that what is the date till which we are updating. Like if you see the BL project start 22nd to 23rd is first activity, second is 24th to 30th and third activity is 31st to 10th of November. So let us say we are standing somewhere on 5th of November right now. So just mention this date 5th of November somewhere in your notebook and Till 5th of November, what is the progress of our project? We will be updating everything very properly. So let us say our first activity, which is site clearance, got started. You can update in the status also. It got started. So you can cl click on this started and it started on 22nd October only. Okay. So this is the actual start. Then it we are assuming that it got finished also, but instead of finishing on 23rd of October, it got finished on 24th of October. That means one day after the scheduled. So we will click on select. So you can see it is updating the actual start as 22nd October and actual finish as 24th, whereas the baseline is 22nd and 23rd. So for the completed activities, you need not input the physical percentage because obviously it will be 100% and actual duration will be calculated this minus this which will be three days remaining is zero because the activity has got completed and at complete the duration is three so you need not enter anything for the activities which have got completed okay so let us say next activity which was supposed to happen after site clearance so maybe because of some reason instead of starting on 25th see ideally on 24th evening you will complete site clearance because i have chosen that on 24th october at 7 pm this activity is getting completed so as per our calendar the site ends at 7 pm so ideally the excavation should start on 25th october early morning at 8 o'clock when the site starts but let us assume that because of some constraint it is not getting started on 20 uh, 5th of October, but it is started. So we will click on this and we will choose a date. Okay. So let us say instead of starting on 25th, it is starting on 26th of October, maybe one day delay because of any reason, maybe, uh, some, uh, equipment breakdown or some staff issues or, uh, some, something happened because of which it didn't get started on that particular day. Okay. So it was supposed to be scheduled for a duration of if you see the original duration, which is your six days. Okay. So it should take six days as per your baseline schedule 24th to 30th. So let us assume that instead of 20s, instead of six days, it took only four days maybe. Okay. So we will say it is finished, but it got finished within four days only. So if you go here, so it started on 26th. It started on 26. Yes. So it started on 26 or so 26, 27, 29 and 30. It got completed on 30th of October itself prior to the committed dates. So we will click on select. Okay. So basically if you see then your project is running properly now because it got completed on 30th October. Okay. So you see physical percentage is hundred actual is four at complete is also four. Now, if you go to third activity, so you see that it is taking 10 days actual or sorry, baseline duration is 10 days. So let us say that it got started and it started on 
31st October only. Okay, let us assume that it started on 31st October only, but it is not yet finished because we are right now on 5th of November. Let us suppose the uh, current date is 5th of November on which we are updating the progress. So actual finish, we don't know, but till 5th of November, that means 31st, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Maybe one day is Sunday. In five days, how much work is completed? You need to enter it manually. So let us say uh, the project is running very behind schedule and only 20% of the work got completed in 50% of the duration. So this is how you updated the physical percentage. But you see remaining percentage, remaining days and at complete didn't change. But if this activity would be a duration percentage type of activity, then in that particular case, definitely percentage complete would be depending on duration. Then if you change it to 20%, that only 20% of the work has got completed, then remaining would have automatically got changed to eight number of days. Okay. So this is the difference between percentage of physical and percentage of duration. So we need to update that remaining is still, uh, let's say, in, uh, uh, we will say remaining is, let's say, eight days. Okay. So this is what we have updated manually. So now it is the time to schedule everything and we will see that these dates and all in start and finish will get changed uh, after the dates, after this activity dates will change depending on the current scenario of our project. Okay. Right now you can see that this is scheduled on 12th of November till 22nd, then 23rd to 17th. Then this is 8th Jan to 15th Jan and so on. So we will schedule it and the date should be 5th of November. So we will choose 5th of November. Okay. See, right now we are not updating any cost and all. It is just about the dates as of now. So focus on dates for this particular thing. And we will click on schedule. Now you see after clicking on schedule, so many things updated here. See, you can switch on the progress spotlight also from your tools tab. The progress spotlight, what it does is it will just highlight the activities till your uh, data date. See, in the schedule option, you have put the data date of 5th of November. So progress spotlight is nothing but it will update. the. It will show in yellow all the activities uh, from completion to your data date. So right now, these activities are in progress, which are in yellow color. So if you see the baseline versus your blue color, see blue means your activity has got completed. So your first activity has got completed. And if you see the baseline, it is very small. I think if you are able to see it, it is very small here. It is showing that your activity started as per the baseline, but it got completed after the baseline schedule. So it got delayed. But in the second activity, if you see, so it started after the baseline, but it completed on as per the baseline only. So overall, the project progress was fine here. In the third activity, it started as per the baseline only, but the baseline is this is still this particular date, but this activity is expected to go beyond your baseline because of which other activities are also getting affected if you see. All the activities are getting affected because of this. And even if you see the anticipated finish here, see, if you see the baseline finish is 16th of January, but your anticipated finish is now showing 18th of January. That means just because of two, three activities, your project has got delayed by two days as of now. So when you will further update the activities, further more changes will come in the project, which might be positive also, or if you, uh, speed up some particular activity so your project can get completed prior to your committed date also. So this is how we update the pro progress of the project and we see the changes clearly. Okay. So in the earned value video, we'll be seeing some parameters related to earned value management, like estimated completion, schedule variance and all through which you will get more insights about the progress of your activity. See, one more thing is, this activity complete is showing clearly that it is 100% completed. This activity is also 100% completed, but this activity is only 20% completed because we only gave the input that this activity is 20% only done. But if you see schedule percentage complete, then as per the schedule, as per the data date that you have provided, so this activity should have completed 100% this also, but this activity should have got completed only 40% because the data date is 
5th of November. So till 31st to 5th of November, if you see the schedule percentage, then it will be 40% of the time of the total time of this particular activity. So this is the significance of schedule percentage complete. You can see this from here also. Okay. <clears throat> so this is how you update these things. Now moving on to the cost. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to go to resources. So for very first activity, we will go to resources. And we see here that four resources were there and budgeted cost was there and some budgeted units per time was also there. This is the budgeted units and the type of activity is if you go to general, you can see the uh, duration type is fixed duration and units. You cannot change it right now. So if you go to resources, you will have to manually enter your actual units that how many units have got spent in this particular activity. So right now, if you see this actual units are showing same as budgeted units, even though your duration has changed, your BL duration was only, uh, I think two days, but your actual duration is three days. So you should, you should have a question in your mind that budgeted units is 20. So actual units should be 30 because your activity has got extended by one day. Similarly for this budgeted unit is 40, but actual unit should be 60. So it is not changing these things because you have to ultimately enter these values manually only. One more thing is, which I'm not very sure about, but uh, you need to give it a try because the duration type is fixed duration and units. So that is why it has taken the same units as well as irrespective of the duration. It has fixed the duration and it has fixed the units. So even though if your duration is changing from two to three, it has not changed the units. What it has done is instead of changing the units, it has increased the units per uh, time. Okay. That means it has changed the productivity. So this might, this might be a possible scenario. So that is why we need to update the actual units manually. So suppose instead of 20, now he's spending uh, 30 hours. Similarly, this particular resource, which is Mason uh, for 60 hours, then moving on to next 40 hours. And let us say that this person was only available for 30 hours. Let us say, okay. So we have updated the actual units. So based on the actual units, it will calculate the actual cost. If you see it will, what, what it does is it just multiplies the actual unit with the price and gives you the actual cost. So if you go to the last column, then you can see that the budgeted cost is only $26,000 or whatever the currency is. We, we cannot bother about the currency because uh, I took it in INR, but ultimately the symbols and all went to uh, dollar only. So actual total cost is coming 42,000, which we updated right now. So this is how we can update the cost also. Similarly for second activity, we can do the same. You just need to update the actual units because the units will not change again. I'm telling you because the duration type is fixed duration and units. Okay. So we need to update the units here also. So this activity, instead of going for uh, the actual duration is four days, but it was planned for six days. So maybe the units consumed will be lesser. So let us say here it is 40 here. Let's say it is 30, whatever it is here. It is, let's say 40 here also 40 then here let's say we will say it is 30 okay so again if you go to the last column then you will see the changes in the actual total cost so here the total cost is lesser as compared to your budgeted cost because the activity got completed in less number of days similarly for third also you can update the actual units but here you need to update the remaining units also uh, remaining units you can just anticipate See this activity, you are telling that instead of 40% completion, it is only 20% complete. So you can anticipate that this activity will go beyond your 10th of November. It started on 31st, but you are anticipating that since it is running slow behind schedule, so it might go till 12th of November, 13th of November and so on. So actual units spent might be whatever, but your remaining units will definitely be more. Okay. And total will come more as compared to your budgeted unit. So let's say since 40% of the time got elapsed. So we will say that, uh, 40 units spent here, here also 40 here. Let's say 90 units got spent here. Let's say 
200 units got spent and here also 40 okay here also let's say 40 so remaining units now you can change the remaining units here let us say we will keep the remaining units as 90 okay here we will keep the remaining units as uh, 75 let's say here we will keep 400 here we will keep 150 then here also we will keep 100 and here also we will keep let's say 120 so now if you go and if you see the budgeted cost then it got changed okay so this is the actual cost which has been spent till now it is just calculating what is till now it is not calculating the anticipated cost if you want to calculate the anticipated cost then you can add the column of anticipated cost you just need to find the proper heading for that in search option so that is all about how to track the progress of your activities. You can simply make use of this progress highlight and all and make sure when you schedule it. So there are some options in the schedule also. So like if you see, you can view the log also, I'll show you. So first of all, the options of uh, scheduling you can explore, like recalculate assignment cost after scheduling. I have ticked this that after scheduling, it should recalculate the assignment cost also. Then scheduling the progress activity should use the retained logic. Definitely the logic should not get uh, different. It should retain the logic. So you can change these scenarios also, but I suggest not to change this because whatever is default is fine only. It's just that you can tick this particular box for easy calculation of cost. That's it. So we will see the log now, view log. So if you see the log, I'll just expand it. So scheduling we have done, leveling is not done, ignore relationship is not uh, checked in. So it is just telling you some basic information. Then project is one, number of activities is 13, in progress is one, completed is two, number of relationships is 14, okay. Then activities without predecessors, activities without successors. Then we have no activity out of sequence. That means our scheduling is done fine. Our tracking is done fine. Then these are some other uh, data that it is giving. Then scheduling results, project, project scheduled, activity scheduled, data date, it's 5th of November. Earliest, early start date is 5th of November. Latest finish date is 18th of January. Then some critical activities it is telling. So this report will be very useful. You need to focus on these activities that these activities should not get delayed at any particular cost. Okay. So this is how you can view the log also. So that's all about uh, progress tracking and reviewing for the project. So I hope it was clear. If you have some doubts, you can just shoot your queries. So thank you everyone.